Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Cars. This time we're talking about a car that's actually kind of interesting to me. Because, you see, Jaguar, right, as a brand, since the British Land Meltdown, has been tossed around quite a bit, sold and resold. And in that time, they've always been trying to say, please, irrelevant, I swear. But then, in around 2013, they launched the Jaguar F-Type Convertible. Oh my goodness. I have never really liked modern Jaguars. Anything after the uh, X220 just became a bit... Well, that's an Aston Martin, isn't it? Yeah, no, seriously. But then when they came out with the F-Type Convertible officially uh, in 2014, 15 available to the mass public, I was thrilled. I'm like, I can get behind this car. I love this car. And I can't wait for the coupe version of the hardtop to come out. And then that did. And I'm like, this is cool. It's loud. It's got a big roaring V8. I love that. And then about a year later, I got hit with something I like to call Tesla Syndrome, meaning it was really cool. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't. Like... You know what I haven't thought, oh, the Tesla Model S is such a good looking car, it looks like a Aston Martin and all the refined things you want from an electric vehicle. And now we're like, what the fuck is this exactly? Yeah, no, same thing kind of happened with the um, Jaguar F-Type, um, quite sadly, with the, with the coupe version. The convertible version, especially the Project 7, definitely kind of retained its, well, awesomeness, but the coupe just kind of lost it. It just went, okay, I'm kind of round, I've got wheels and a big engine, what next? And then... Now, in 2019, Jaguar finally unveiled something new, a change for the style, a change for the entire car. I'm, of course, talking about the new Jaguar F-Type SVR Coupe. This car, or Coupe. Ugh. This car, I cannot wait. They've already released a few versions for road testing to the public, just saying, hey, can you test these out for us? And some drivers are getting paid to test them out. But seriously, when this car goes on sale to the general public next month, this is going to be really cool. Anyway, basically, I'll put a picture on the screen right now. Okay, what you've just seen are actually a few pictures of the brand new Jaguar F-Type SVR Coupe. Now, when I first saw this car, I'm like, I love the new design. What's so new about it? Literally, I spent about 15 minutes looking at the bodywork to see what the big new change was that caught my eye. I couldn't find it. And that's because it's all in the small details. The doors have been scooped in very slightly to give it more of a pinched, tense look. Like, it's ready to go super fast, but also to take you elegantly around all the corners in life. It's a good-looking car now, and it was good-looking before, but it was good-looking in a way that could be easily overlooked. This new version says, nope, I'm here, get over it, I'm loud, but also a very nice car to drive in. And then, of course, we get to all the little specs I have to talk about, of course. First off, the price. Just keep in mind, the last highest-end coupe version of this car in 2016 that came out, they've been remaking the same model since then, was $100,000 for the highest-end version. That's pretty expensive for what Jaguar still classes as a mid-range sports car. It's high-range for them because they don't really make anything faster than that anymore, apart from stuff for their racing teams. So, yeah, they call a mid-range sports car, whatever. This new one is around 123000 I'll explain why in a minute, because this, th 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 that is a very big jump in price. It's even more expensive, and honestly, unless you really love this car, I can't really justify it to you. But I will try. So, 0 to 60. I was a really big fan of 0 to 60 until, like, honestly, a lot of stuff changed me in, like, the last year or so. I started to respect V8 engines more, although I still think a standard V8 engine on its own sounds like someone trying to gargle nails. Go on, just put a big turbocharger on it, you'll be fine. Anyway... Um, and yeah, I really started to respect 0 to 60 times a lot more than I did. I always think, oh, top speed, no. But now I think definitely 0 to 60 actually does matter. I've changed a little bit in the last year or so on um, my views about cars, especially since I started filming, well, let's talk cars. Anyway, 0 to 60 on this one, 3.5 seconds. That puts it well under the gate of supercar territory, which we go to Lamborghini, like, Lamborghini Aventador, it came out in 2011, only eight years ago. And yeah, it's already been shot back to the Stone Age. However, it's four to, uh, around 4-ish seconds to 60. It's still the supercar territory gate for speed. Eh? Like 4.1, maybe. Anything else, 
It's not a supercar. Uh, actually, no, you know, just go ahead. After you finish this video, go back and check out my Let's Talk Car Season 3 video on what makes a supercar a supercar. Anyway, yeah, 3.5 seconds. That's reasonably fast. Actually, no. Sorry. Fast for top speed, quickness is for acceleration. That is a very, very, very quick mid-range sports car. I kind of went from, like, bland American to bland British in, like, half a second. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. Horsepower? I, let me remind you, the last one had 400 horsepower. That's quite a bit for any car that's not, like, a big truck or something that you see on the road. I've seen plenty of these, not the new ones, but, like, old, just not, well, it's, it's, it's kind of, still kind of weird to call, like, a 2017, 2016 car old, but the older model of the Jaguar F-Type Coupe, I've seen that one driving around the road quite a bit, even out here in California, um, even around where I live, which has, like, a population consisting mostly of Honda Civics. And so, they're not that rare to see rolling around. So a car with 400 horsepower is pretty impressive. And so realize that this new one has 575 horsepower, holy shit, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's really, 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 really powerful. Uh, you can also, they're also gonna add, a, eventually, a two turbochargers and supercharger extra options for this car, but this, this is just, we know about it right now. 575 horsepower for the lowest model of SVR. Now, SVR is actually gonna have two models. I've tried my best to find the stats and specs for the second model, but I just can't seem to find them anywhere. Sorry. Yeah, 575 horsepower. That's a lot for something that is apparently going to also have an all-wheel drive option. Which in this car, as shows like uh, Top Gear, a brief segment on Fast and Loud, and the Grand Tour have proved, you kind of need to go anywhere. Because the, the Jaguar does a lot of stuff right nowadays, but two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive especially, because they actually did make a few front-wheel drive cars for some reason in 2001. Rear-wheel drive is not their specialty, let's just say it like that. Anyway, 575 horsepower to all four wheels. Fucking awesome. Let's move on, shall we? Then we have the engine. So, sta I mentioned that the, you can get the turbocharged later on as extras. Standard is a supercharged 5-liter V8 out of a Ford Mustang. What? Yeah, I expected it to be V8. I mean, it's a Jag. It's a, it's a powerful one, too. And the supercharged, obviously, the supercharged turbocharged is what I was expecting out of this. But, the, the, so basically what they've announced, they, they've modified one from a Shelby GT500 2016 Mustang. Which is already a bit of a, no, no, not a bit, that is a very powerful car. They've downgraded that tuning slightly just so it could fit in this and work with this, the whole computer systems in this car. Because it's a very technology advanced car, this one. It's, it's very computer controlled, so we either take it or leave it if you like it or not, I don't know. But they've down-tuned it a little bit to work well with this car, and it can go fast. 208 miles an hour fast. Now, in video games like Forza, I prefer my cars to hit about 260. In real life, there are only a handful of cars that can do that, and only even less of them that can actually be driven on the roads safely or even legally. So, 205. Seriously, there are people like, uh, but like in England now, like, seeing making, uh, as putting limiters on all cars, like all cars, even new ones getting brought in. The limit to like 120 miles an hour, meaning Lamborghinis will be basically worthless. People are like, where can you even drive this, like, drive this, this fast in the first place? It's not about how fast you can drive it legally on the road, it's about how fast you can drive it. Meaning, private property, or just knowing that one day I can get to go this fast. And 205 for a Jag is a really, 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 really good number. Now, the reason I say for a Jag is although they've always been kind of quick and very fast cars. In fact, they've held the land speed record, not land speed record, the record for fastest cars twice with the XK120, XK220, respectively. Um, even though the 220 was overtaken like three weeks by the Bugatti EB110, they still had the record for a little while. Point being, they've always also been focused on luxury. A bit like Aston Martin, just they've been playing catch up for the last few years because Aston Martin's been way ahead of them with stuff like the Vanquish and the Vantage. However, They've sacrificed a bit of speed here. They did admit that they could have gotten a lot, maybe about maybe five to six more miles per hour out of this car if they'd not been focused so much on the comfort of the interior because they described it, and I'm not kidding, this is Jaguar I'm talking about now, as a convertible hardtop, which makes no sense to me, a convertible, actually, no, 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 sorry, no, S-drive roof, the folding roof, yeah, whatever. This is not a folding roof. They just, just kind of, I think, kind of talking out of their ass in this one. Which is, they described it as a um, convertible hardtop, we'll see what that means, um, miniature Rolls Royce in a 205 mile per hour sports car. Mid-range sports car. 205 miles an hour does not class you as a sports car, nor does it class you as mid-range. Move on, you're not the type of brand you think you are, Jaguar. Seriously, you made an amazing car and own up to it. It's a great car. 
Um, now, the wheels on this one, they've got very thick tires. I, I don't actually have the dimensions for the actual tires. However, the rims are 16 or 18 inches, which is pretty big considering that the last one only had 14 and a half inch rims. Half inch rims, yes, those exist occasionally. Hell, they even have 0.9 inch rims occasionally. But yeah, no, so just, these are nice rims because they, this helps to balance out the whole shock. Now, the suspension has been lowered, and if you didn't think the last one was low enough, well, don't go over speed bumps in this car without some help. I mean, yeah, well, it has some cushioning on speed bumps to stop you from scraping the bottom along and destroying the bottom of your car, but if you just speed bump it at high speed, which is kind of why it's there to stop you from doing that, your car will definitely be scraping some speed bumps because this thing has barely any ground... It's, it's got slightly less ground clearance than the last one did, the 2016-2017 one, but that makes it only about yay high off the ground at the best of times. So, suspension, although definitely nice and tight for this car, would not be the best when driving around bumpy areas. That's why, yeah, it just it just wouldn't be because, you know, you're going to have the underside of your car just completely destroyed. And uh, out of a $123,000 car, you really don't want that. So, yeah, also, um, I'm in like thinner and more robust for this car. The body has been thinned down a little bit, pinched at the sides, looks great. Also, a lot of weight has been trimmed off because they replaced some metal with carbon fiber underneath paneling. Like, only, like not like not underside paneling, but like, they have, for some reason, the old one, two layers of paneling in the boot. I call it a boot, even though I'm American, my dad's British, so I call the, this is kind of funny, actually, I call the trunk a boot, but the bonnet a hood. Best of both worlds, I guess? Anyway, um, point being, um, yeah, no, so they had, like, double layer paneling on a lot of things, like the boot lid and the side doors, the rear, uh, for, for, like, the side doors and like, the rear panels of the cars. Um, so they removed the inner paneling and replaced it all with carbon fiber. It might not seem like it would do a lot, but it definitely does a lot to make the car quite a bit lighter, which is always good. And hey, maybe it won't sink so low on those speed bumps, huh? Anyway, I am really, really, really excited for this car. As I said before, the Jaguar F-Type was always exciting when it came out. Project 7 version came out. Fucking awesome. f Type Coupe came out. Okay, that's cool. And then, about a year later, it's got Tesla Syndrome. God damn it. This new one, I cannot see it getting boring anytime soon. Thank you guys for watching, and, um, yeah. See you guys next video. Still watching, huh? Yeah, that's cool. Say, if you have the time, why not head over to my channel and take a look at my Let's Talk Car series, a show where I talk about developments in the automotive world, like new cars are coming out, or just my favorite cars. Anyway, uh, we are in season four right now, and have new episodes coming out every Thursday. So go, yeah, go take a look. Anyway, thanks for watching.